Hey folks, and welcome to Scott Trans. Today is Thursday and I'm Jessie. So this week's topic, we are talking about mental health. Do check out everyone else's video from this week, and uh, yeah. So the structure of this video, I will be initially just talking a little bit about mental health, and then mainly focusing on where to maybe get help and support if you're having difficulty with coping. And then at the very end of this video, I will discuss briefly how my mental health status and stability and history or whatnot has affected the time scale of how quickly I've been seen and had the okay for HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy, at my GIC gender identity clinic. Um, so yeah. So yeah, this week we're talking about mental health. Basically anyone can be affected by mental health, just as anyone can be affected by physical health. Um, mental health and well-being is pretty important as sometimes it can drastically affect your mood, your behaviour, and it's important to understand that you can have support from people around you. So anyone can have blips in their mental health and some people may be diagnosed with certain mental health conditions. That could be, for instance, something like anxiety or depression. And sometimes anxiety and depression can happen at the same time. Or stress or um, maybe other conditions such as bipolar, both types, uh, schizophrenia, and there are some other um, mental health conditions as well. And because anyone can have any sort of mental health thing going on, um, and also because I know it's important to make sure you've got support around you and someone you can talk to about um, mental health when things are really tough, to say the least. And I think that's why I'm going to be a little bit open-ended and a little bit broad in discussing mental health in this video and discuss more of the root of different ways to get some help and support when needed about mental health. Just generally that it can be it can feel quite difficult to talk about mental health to someone else. Not only is it that sometimes you feel somewhat trapped inside, but it is important to try and discuss things with, discuss things with someone, um, especially if you're finding it difficult to cope and especially if your mental health is causing problems which affect your daily life. And especially if um, your condition may affect you long term. So yeah, um, what's important to do and can unfortunately be very difficult to do is try and seek out some advice and support. This could be for instance talking to a trusted friend, relative, co-worker, partner, someone you can talk to in confidence and you trust. You could also go to your GP practice, book an appointment, possibly a double appointment if you believe it may be a long uh, or tricky appointment. So whether you think it can be done in 10 minutes or less or perhaps a double appointment so you've got some more time to discuss things with your GP. Or perhaps you could talk to a helpline. There are many around. Um, a couple I can think of offhand is Samaritan, so that's certainly one of the most well-known ones. And there's another one as well, I can't remember what it's called, I'm going to add a thing and look in the description below for helplines that I can find to do with mental health. And also there's LGBT plus health and well-being, I believe they have a hotline as well you can phone. And also sometimes there can be community support groups. Um, these could be courses in things such as CBT, which is Cognitive, cognitive Behavioural Therapy, um, or Mindfulness. But generally what I know of the community sort of groups about mental health where you've got courses, sometimes they are structured so that it's sometimes one-to-one -one, but quite tricky to get one-to-one. -one. But it could often be in a group situation with other people you do not know over several weeks and they are designed to get coping mechanisms and discuss what the specific mental health thing is. Um, the one I know of that's sort of nearby me is only really geared up towards discussing anxiety, depression and stress, not really anything else. 
other than that. Um, for instance, it won't include anything like how to deal with a psychotic episode. So that's something to take in mind. So in terms of how my mental health status, history and stability has somewhat affected my time scale for having HRT, hormone replacement therapy, um, approval from the GIT clinic, the gender identity clinic, is that a long story as short as possible, I'm not even 100% sure if I'll get a testosterone prescription in my next appointment in November, but GIC were hesitant to give me testosterone, not just because, oh, this person has mental health conditions, but it was mainly to do with there not being enough stats backed up to work out if the main symptom of concern, which is psychosis, my medication itself and its dosage, and with the introduction of testosterone, whether that will cause any complications to my mental health stability. So I have been told that I may be prescribed testosterone in a gel form rather than a shot injection form. This is just so that you can cut yourself off from the hormone really quickly in case there are any complications in my mental health stability basically. So thank you for putting up with my rambles and poor editing in this video. Do check out everyone else's video from this week on this topic of mental health. I'm sure everyone else will have a more informative and better perspective on things than I am and apologies for being so vague and generalising. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you next week.